Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of August 24th, brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com, news from the people, for the people. I am Winston Smith. Tinfoil hats may be making a comeback. Staging a collapse, P.E. Nolan is here with a report, possibly in her jammies. Dylan's baby, a baby daddy. Dr. Woody is stopping in with a few crumbs. Hippie woman lightens things up a little bit later. Our asshole of the week and more. Our top story. Obama and Hillary Clinton's secret pact with Japan to downplay Fukushima radiation risk. Fukushima is far from stabilized, according to Energy Advisor veteran with 39 years of nuclear power engineering experience, Arnie Gunderson. Gunderson, with a team of other scientists, intends to prove the government's statements about Fukushima are false. The United States came up with a decision to downplay Fukushima, said Gunderson, who is awakening the public with information such as hot particles and rain will continue falling in the U.S., not just the Pacific Northwest, for another year or longer, and mentioning high-level fallout in Oklahoma a few days ago that the press seemed to miss. Gunderson's told Solar Star IMG that high-level people he knows in the State Department said Hillary Clinton signed a pact with her counterpart in Japan agreeing for the United States to continue buying food from Japan, despite that food not being properly tested for radioactive materials. Worldwide Hippies is so alarmed, now we have a Japan fallout daily on our website, so you can go there every day and keep yourself informed. And this. Five killed after stage falls at Indiana State Fair. Just the latest in what's reported as a random act of God. Seems like every week we're reporting on deaths at concerts, festivals, and amusement parks. So is God just pissed off? Or is there another reason for people having to buy life insurance before going to a concert? Actually, injuries and deaths from entertainment venues has been on the rise ever since the 1980s. Most entertainment venues are now corporate venues. That is, when you buy a ticket to see your favorite band play, what you are buying is entrance to a corporate event that is featuring your favorite band. A corporation that has K Street lobbyists as well as politicians and pundits in their pockets and on their payrolls. The result is non-union labors, outsourced security, lack of code enforcement, limited liabilities, and a total media brownout. The same corporations that sponsor or profit from these events own the media that's supposed to keep track on this stuff. Never, without exception, does the media point to the corporation that should be held responsible for the negligence they demonstrate by their behavior all to save a buck. No, it's God, the weather, or most often, it's the crowd that gets the blame. So until we have addressed the corrupt system here in America and around the globe, stay close to the exit, folks. Here's the doc. Hey, thanks, Winston. And from the high chai hua hua and desert, hola hippies everywhere. Mega multi-billionaire Warren Buffett made news last week when he declared it was time that the government stopped coddling, that's his word, the wealthy and taxed them at the same rate that they impose on lesser mortals, such as his own hired help, for which Buffett won torrents of praise. But what he says, eh, codswallop. It's God-smackingly astonishing that so many are so credulous as to always fall for this kind of corporatist excrement. Because, of course, not Buffett, not Gates, not Steve Jobs, not a single one of the top 1,400 big money guys is in the slightest danger of having his or her taxes raised one red cent, and they know it. Sitting pretty like they do, it's easy to talk shit. Meanwhile... Buffett, Gates, Jobs, and the rest are doing and have done everything possible to assure that not one single fucking penny of their vast bloodied fortunes ever returns to the general treasury of the American people from whom they took it. Instead, they have devised elaborate bequeathments to distribute their billions to convivial private corporate charities where their plans for the future will be accomplished even after they have returned to the corruption that is our common essence. They're vampire capitalists who turn into zombie philanthropists. If Buffett et al. are really serious about supporting the Republic, let them assemble a coalition of willing billionaires, redirect their lobbyists, buy a few senators, oust Murdoch from Fox, and then, like the feller says, get her done. 
Otherwise, they're just blowing smoke out their asses and up ours. And on that happy note, hasta luego, hippies. Back to Winston in Hippie Central. Doc, your eloquence is only superseded by your inner talker tube, man. And here is P.E. Nolan with her report. How are we getting active this week, Trish? Thanks, Winston. The owners, as George Carlin used to call them, stoke fear and hatred in the public. So we're too busy fighting each other to join together against them. Uh, but when we pay attention to beauty in the world around us, instead of the owners, we focus on the things that really matter. And that's why a creative writing teacher named Jennifer started the Exploring Beauty Challenge on her blog, Realia. It's a simple idea. Find 101 examples of beauty, show, tell, list, or write them. Um, photographs, paintings, crafts, um, poems, songs. Uh, you decide uh, what you think is beautiful and how you want to share that. Um, there is no time frame, and any time is a great time to start. Jennifer said, Sometimes I feel like I'm a Miss Mary Sunshine about looking for the positive, but if I didn't, I would slide into a depression. Finding beauty is a choice. Living outside your head with compassion and love makes you happier. When you're happier, you're a better person, parent, friend, citizen and you're in a better position to affect change. Uh, when the owner's bullshit is no longer hiding, this little light of uh, yours, mine, and ours, then um, we will have turned bullshit into gold, Winston, and uh, that's being the change. Back to you. Thanks, Trisha. And you can see P.E. Nolan as well as the Doc and Hippie each week on Hippie TV News and Stuff. Bob Dylan's grandson has just released a CD called Pablo Dylan, 10 Minutes. Not the social revolutionary crooner like his granddaddy, but a rapper. In an interview with AllHipHop.com, the 15-year-old opens up about his nascent career as a rapper and his grandfather's legacy. My grandfather, I consider him to be the Jay-Z of his time, and he definitely has a legacy that a lot of people look up to, said Pablo. He feels strongly about my music, and I love him to death. Man, do I feel old. Seems like just yesterday I was reviewing Blood on the Tracks for my college TV station. But you thought this was my first gig? Pablo went on to say, of course, we do two different things, and I don't want people to see me for what he has done. Yeah, right, Pablo. Then why use his stage name, Mr. Pablo Zimmerman? And now, with something slightly relevant, here is Hippie TV's newest reporter, Hippie Woman, reporting from Los Angeles. Thanks, Winston. Pop star Christina Aguilera has put on a few pounds. Kelly Osborne has shed 50 pounds. Kelly recently reaped her revenge on Christina for calling her fat in the past. Osborne said, she called me fat for so many years, so you know what? F you. You're fat too. Are we interested? What is interesting is the public reaction, namely this guy. Now you know there's nothing that raises a bitch's eyebrows more than seeing a fat bitch calling another fat bitch a fat bitch. Girl, now you know sometimes they say sticks and stones may break your bones, but words that never hurt you. Bitch, that's a mother Lie. I was automatically thinking of high school, where everybody fit in this shape. You fatty sh She gonna never be able to get a job. She gonna never be able to get a man. He ain't gonna never be able to do sh because he's a fat bitch. Ten years pass. You go to your class reunion, and what do you see? A whole bunch of fat bitches and bastards. You got in the shape, honey. You looking good. You got on your, your suit. Christina Aguilera had it coming. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, she gaining all this weight. Now she look like the fat bitch. Kelly Osbourne slimmed down. What comes around goes a motherfucking around, and I believe that shit. 
to the T. Christina Aguilera girl, come as a bitch, and it came back to you, honey, and bitch you on the ass. According to a recent study published by The Lancet, if you're active for just 15 minutes a day, you can reduce your risk of death by 14%. You can reduce your risk of dying of cancer by 10% and increase your life expectancy by up to three years. You can also reduce your risk of heart disease and diabetes. If you'll excuse me, this fat bitch has a date with a treadmill. I'll see you next week. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Back to you, Winston. Thanks for the helpful advice, Hippie. I lift weights every day to stay in shape, 12 ounces at a time. Oh, it's time for our asshole of the week. And this week it goes to C-SPAN. For their pro-corporate, pro-neocon, pro-government propaganda presented as Independence Balance Reporting 24-7. This past Sunday, I watched Robert Rector, Senior Research Fellow from the Heritage Foundation on a corporate-funded anti-American think tank, spew lies and misinformation about the poor in this country as the host bantered as if in agreement and was unchallenged by the same host when his numbers and facts were so outrageously skewed, misleading, and out-and-out -out wrong. Watch for yourselves. Write a lot about social programs, especially when it comes to federal social programs. Well, I, I write about anti-poverty programs. Conservatives tend to call those welfare. Other people, I say anti-poverty program for people that are liberals. As how large and how many of those programs we have. The, the federal government runs over 70 of those different programs. Again, cash, food, housing, and medical care for the poor and low income. And we are spending this year over $900 billion dollars. The largest category of spending is Social Security and Medicare. Mm -hmm. The second one is this anti-poverty, these anti-poverty programs, and then followed by defense. And, and the, the, um, it's really a lot of money. It's over $20,000 for each poor person. Mm -hmm. And also, it's the fastest growing uh, component of spending. If you look at this population of 40 million people that are ostensibly poor, what you find from other government surveys is that they have air conditioning, they have cable TV, they have a computer, uh, they have they have kids, they have an Xbox or a PlayStation, they have uh, two or three color televisions. Forty percent of them now have a plasma TV. If you ask them, did you have enough food to eat in your family at all times during the year, ninety percent of them will say absolutely. We had t uh, we had uh, just enough food. We didn't have any problem with that. If you look at their housing. Uh, they're in good housing, it's in good condition, they're not overcrowded. In fact, the average poor person actually has more housing space than the average European, not a poor European, but the average European. The trick is, however, that all this anti-poverty spending is not counted as income. So, yes, isn't that amazing? And so you spend close to a trillion dollars a year taking it away from the rich and the middle class and providing it to the poor. And it does help the poor. It raises their standard of living. But then when we go to measure poverty, that money disappears. Also, when you go to measure inequality, when you hear the numbers rich versus poor, mm -hmm. that trillion dollars that's taken away from the rich and given to the poor is not counted. C-SPAN is not a free press entity as they present themselves to be almost on an hourly basis. They are financed totally by the cable industry. That is all major media outlets and corporations that own them. Whatever Orwellian mind came up with this was a genius. But for not even attempting to challenge Robert Rector's senior research fellow from the Heritage Foundation, you C-SPAN, the worldwide hidden asshole of the week. And that's it for this week. Thanks to P.E. Nolan, Hippie Woman, and the esteemed Dr. Woody. Please visit WorldWideHippies.com for more news, information, and features from our own writers and news updated every two hours. Make a donation or buy a t-shirt at the site and you will be helping Worldwide Hippies to keep up the howl for peace and justice. And you will see us here next Monday.